We'd like to thank you uh, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. All right, let's first look at Ghana, where you are, and the COVID-19 response. Would you say that the worst is over? Um, I would not say that. We have currently been informed that there are a few strains of the Delta variant in different parts of the country. We have had a very strong COVID response. Um, the initial um, measures that were taken by the government have been very great. We we were the first country in Africa to actually um, have access to the COVAX facility. And since then, we've had some more doses of, of the vaccines coming in. We do have a, a very good supply chain system for routine vaccines, which has really helped us. But to say that we are out of the woods, no, I would say we still have to keep on making sure that people apply these protocols, COVID-19 protocols, to so avert any more deaths in the country. Let's look at Dr. Fenny, let's look at the broader measures. Um, has Africa thoroughly analyzed the costs, the benefits of the current initiatives? Um, if you take the vaccination campaign, for example, is it organized in the most efficient or most cost-effective way? Um, again, there have been a few studies, for example, studies on the impact of, of GDP across um, different countries in Africa. So we know for sure, we have evidence to show that countries' GDPs have declined over the past two years. But then there's still a lot of room for more impact assessments to know how COVID has affected how jobs, education, um, employment. There are so many other parts of this story that we need to put together. And it brings to mind um, one of the areas that we need to focus on investments in research and development, um, which is really lacking. Um, one of the things I'm really aware of now is the fact that Africa CDC has done a few, um, has, has a few estimates about how much it will cost us um, as a continent to, to be able to acquire 1.5 billion doses. That's in the region of about $10 billion for 60% of the population in Africa. But there's still a lot more we can do. So there's priority setting, there's evidence cases that we need to come up with. There are so many other um, research that we need to invest in. And maybe this is a wake up call for us to continue investing in research and development across the continent. So in terms of um, perhaps post pandemic, um, what, what would you say our global health goal uh, should be as a continent? So financing is key. We have seen throughout the response across the uh, different nations, our reliance on external partners. The World Bank, for example, has sustained the recovery of several countries in Africa, supporting with resources and finances. And we really look at how much we need to keep on vaccinating and the huge numbers of people who have not been vaccinated as of now. And so the cost implications, the supply chain, the cold chain, everything to do with the health sector and even the broader health system um, and other, other, other areas that we need to invest in. Um, I think financing is key. We have seen the impact of, of having no funds and, and having to, to go to the open market because you, you don't have the funds to actually get the vaccines you need. So yes, funding is key in all of this and there's a lot of work to do in Africa. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Amar Pukafeni from the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, University of Ghana. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure.